Hello, hi everyone. Uh, the topic of today's lecture is impressions and correlations in RPD. The learning outcomes are you should be able to discuss the various impression materials used in RPD. You should be able to discuss the various types of impression techniques used for specifically recording partially eventualist situations. You should also be able to know the various types of functional support for the distal extension base and you should be able to discuss the occlusal relationship for removal partial dentures and the methods to establish occlusal relationship that is jaw. Now support for tooth tissue supported RPTs evolves partially from the abutment teeth and partially from the residual alveolar ridge. So special impression techniques are used to equalize as much as possible the support that is derived from the edentulous ridges that is tissue support and that which is received from the abutment teeth that is called as tooth supported RPTs. Now the impression that we take for a, for removal partial dentures should record and relate the tissues under the same loading pressure that is under the occlusal loading or functional loading. Under that condition the tissues should be recorded. The impression should be recorded in such a way that the load is distributed over a large area that is the basal seat area so as to maximize the coverage of the denture bearing area and to prevent bone resorption in the unnecessary loading. You should also record the basis that is especially in Kennedy's class 1 and class 2 situation that is distal extension basis or saddle accurate. Now what are the various factors that affect the support in a distal extension base that is in Kennedy's class 1 that is bilateral distal extension basis and Kennedy's class 2 that is unilateral distal extension base. What are the factors that influence the support? So first is the contour and the quality of the residual alveolar ridges. The second is the extent of the residual alveolar ridge that is being covered by the denture base. The third is the mainly the type of the impression technique used and how accurately it records the denture bearing tissues. Fifth or fourth is accuracy of the fit of the denture base. The denture base should fit accurately and intimately the denture bearing area where the teeth have to be placed without any distortion or without any gap. You should design the removal partial denture framework in such a way that it fits perfectly on the abutment teeth and there is no instability or uh, rocking or rotation around the fulcrum and the type of the occlusal loading that is uh, available with the removal partial denture and the antagonist dentition. That is you should have a cusp fossa relationship with the mandibular denture teeth arranged on the crest of the alveolar ridge with the center force of the mandibular teeth passing through the crest of the alveolar ridge and with a group function or a bilaterally balanced occlusion. Now coming to the first that is the contour and quality of the residual ridges. The ideal ridge should support a denture base consists of the cortical bone with long parallel wall that is tall rounded ridges which is at puts classification 3 with a broad rounded crest and a firm fibrous and resilient connective tissue. There should be no loose flabby tissue, there should be no knife edge ridges. The next is the extent of the residual alveolar ridge that is being covered by the denture base. The broader the residual alveolar ridge coverage, the greater is the distribution of load to the underlying tissues in case of Kennedy's class 1 and class 2. Remember the snowshoe principle. And second, the denture base should cover as much of the residual alveolar ridge as possible and sh should be extended to the maximum amount within the physiological tolerance of the limiting structure. That is, it should extend to the full depth of the vestibule, to the uh, buccal frenum, to the labial frenum, to the lingual frenum, to the alveolingual sulcus without impinging or without compromising the integrity of the limiting structures. The next is the accuracy and type of the impression technique that is being used. Uh, the residual ridge can be captured in two forms that is in the anatomic form that is when the tissues are at rest. The patient is not doing any function movements like chewing, masticating, swallowing that is the tissues are undisturbed at rest and this is the called as the anatomical form of the tissues. The second is the functional form of the residual ridges uh, when the distal extension basis especially the posterior residual alveolar ridges are under functional loading or occlusal load. The accuracy of the denture base as I also mentioned is very important for the support of the distal extension cast partial denture especially Kennedy's class 1 and class 2 and this support is enhanced by intimate contact of the tissue surface or intaglio of the denture base with the tissues firm resident tissues that cover the residual alveolar ridge in the edentulous areas especially again Kennedy's class 1. 
the total occlusal load that is applied which is the last factor the support for the residual lrh should be optimized and shared with the remaining natural dentition as well as the denture teeth this is affected by the number of the artificial teeth that is how many teeth are missing the width of the occlusal surfaces remember to minimize occlusal loading we have to use denture teeth with reduced buccolingual width in order to reduce and center the occlusal forces and to reduce the instability and the occlusal efficiency influences the occlusal load that is whether what kind of dentition or teeth we are using whether they are monoplane or semi anatomic or anatomic type of teeth now coming to the methods for obtaining functional support for distal extension bases so the objective of any functional impression technique is to provide maximum support for the removable partial denture or the rpd this allows for the maintenance of the occlusal contacts between the natural and the artificial teeth and at the same time it minimizes the movement of the denture bases which would create leverage or tipping or tilting forces on the abutment teeth so the ideal impression technique would be one in which the tissues that is the distal extension bases are captured in their functional form and the teeth and the abutment teeth are captured in the anatomic form so uh, some tissue word movement of the distal extension bases is unpreventable and unavoidable but uh, it can be minimized by providing the best possible support for the denture base that is using the maximum denture base coverage accurate fit of the denture base to the underlying tissue using an accurate functional impression to record the tissues in the functional state so this being said there is no single impression technique can be said to be superior over the other and at the same time function from the residual lower ridge should be recorded by any means possible whichever the operator may consider to be suitable for the particular case so impression techniques are broadly uh, classified as a physiological or functional impression technique and second is selective impression techniques or selective pressure impression technique which is uh, based on the same principle of selective pressure impression techniques for complete dentures so coming to the functional impression techniques the functional impression techniques as i said before record the ridges by placing them in the occlusal load that is they record the tissues in the functional form and they record the teeth or the abutment Uh, in the anatomic form next the various functional impression techniques to date are maclean's technique hindel's modification of the maclean's technique we have the functional relining method which is done actually just before the delivery of the denture or at the time of delivery of the rpd and fourth we have the fluid wax impression technique which uses mouth temperature waxes to mold the uh, tissues in the functional form so next uh, is the second category the selective pressure impression technique as uh, selective pressure te impression technique is the same which you have studied in complete dentures that is the selective load is applied to areas that can withstand the load that is the in the maxillary the crest of the residual lower ridge the posterior lateral part of the hard palate and in the mandibular the buccal shelf area and the slopes of the residual lower ridges so pressure is placed only in these areas and other areas are recorded in a pressureless or minimum pressure state by the use of custom trays with uh, proper relief wax now coming to the first technique of functional impression or physiological impression which is given by maclean's which is also known as maclean's physiologic impression technique uh, so maclean believed that the best way to record the tissues in a functional state is by loading them occlusally and uh, for this he what he did was on the diagnostic cast a uh, record base was made and the compound or the hard wax occlusal rims were fabricated especially for credits class 1 and class 2 situations and then the uh, jaw relation or the bite registration was done uh, to the patient's existing vertical dimension and then the the denture base was uh, or was relined with uh, impression material suitable impression material like zinc oxide eugenol or mon medium body or monophase silicone impression material and over this impression a pickup impression was made using a stock impression tray uh, using alginate or a uh, suitable impression material such as agar agar hydrochloride so this is how maclean's record base or you can also call it as a custom tray is looks you first record the impression of the uh, distal extension bases in a functional state uh, by asking the patient to close on the or bite on the occlusal rim which are on top of these uh, denture bases 
and then the impression is recorded in a compressed or the occlusal uh, under occlusal loading and over this once this impression is done it is ready without removing this impression uh, using a stock impression tray and alginate or agar hydrochloride a pickup impression is made so the restriction should basis have been recorded on the occlusal loading and the rest of the impression that is the abutment teeth and the pickup of the uh, functional impression is done in a passive or anatomic state so maclean believed this would relate uh, correlate both the functional and the anatomic impressions uh, together seamlessly but uh, uh, this was uh, not the case in every situation because when the pickup impression is made with the uh, stock tray then the finger pressure is applied to take a pickup impressions and uh, therefore the uh, this impression was not very accurate so what suggested was that he suggested a modification of this technique so in this hindle technique what he did was uh, he created holes in the stock impression tray over the distal extension basis so once you record the uh, impression using in a functional state using maclean's technique then the stock tray was loaded with alginate or agar hydrochloride as shown in this figure and then it was placed in the patient mouth to pick up the functional impression but while the impression material was setting then a finger pressure was used to apply uh, pressure on the wax rims through the hole that is made in the stock tray so that they both the impressions can be recorded in a functional or under uh, occlusal loading so this was hindle considered to be superior to maclean's technique or a modification of maclean's technique uh, at that either at the trine appointment that is during the cast partial denture uh, T trial or at the denture insertion appointment, a relining uh, is done under the RPD that is distal basis with a suitable impression material such as monoface or medium body silicone. And then at the denture is then flask and the relining uh, impression is removed and it is uh, that area is filled with a fresh layer of the acrylic resin. The motive behind this is that uh, after because it is said that even though the impression may be captured accurately and the cast partial may be fabricated it is uh, often seen that after a few weeks or a, a few days there will be settling of the denture bases and the patient may complain that the denture base is slightly loose and it is unstable. So it uh, functional relining technique ensures that the there is intimate contact of the denture base with the underlying tissues. Uh, after the entire car, uh, denture fabrication uh, steps have been complete. So relining is done as a last resort which may be done at the trying appointment or at the denture insertion appointment. And then the denture is given to the patient in the next appointment. So basically there is uh, nothing more to it. And then the fourth technique is a fluid wax impression technique. In the fluid wax impression technique, uh, this is different from the functional relying technique in that uh, fluid wax impression technique is done at the cast framework fit in appointment that is before the jaw relation before the teeth setting or the teeth trine or before the denture insertion at the time of the once the cast partial framework has been fabricated it is finished polished it is checked for fit in the patient's mouth and once we are satisfied with the fist fit of the cast partial framework we add acrylic resin or light cure resin uh, like record basis on the distal that is the lattice over the lattice uh, minor characters of the distal extension base and then an impression is made with a mouth temperature wax such as Iowa wax number 4, uh, Iowa wax from University of Iowa and Corrector wax number from, from the uh, University of Michigan and this uh, wax is then added to the uh, the wax is added to the record basis and the impression is made. So this is the cast partial framework. First we block out any undercuts on the master cast and then uh, light cured resin or uh, self cured resin record bases are attached to the distal extension lattice framework and then the impression is taken with a mouth temperature wax by asking the patient to do various functional movements like moving the tongue, uh, swallowing, masticating all these things uh, for 20 to 30 and then we get an accurate impression of the functional tissues and, and then the uh, dentures are fabricated on this the impression is then uh, the teeth setting is done on these trays and the, uh, uh, that is uh, flask, de-wax, acrylize. So,
fluid wax impression technique. The next uh, 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 technique is the selective pressure impression technique. So selective pressure impression technique is the same as the one used for pictures. So uh, there's nothing much to it. And then uh, another technique which is uh, which neither uh, falls under the functional impression and which neither falls under the selective pressure impression technique is the altered cast impression technique. So this is uh, uh, an impression technique which is uh, done after the master cast has been fabricated. All the previous impression techniques including selective impression techniques are taken uh, to fabricate a master cast on which the final denture will be fabricated except the function reliant technique which you remember it is done after the fabrication of the cast partial denture. Whereas alters cast impression technique is a technique to modify the altered cast. That's why it is called as altered cast or corrected cast impression technique. So basically this is a Kennedy's class 2 situation. So we take, you can use selective pressure or uh, you know uh, fluid wax impression technique to fabricate the cast. Once the master cast is fabricated, the cast framework is fabricated and same like fluid wax impression technique. On the cast partial framework, a uh, record base is made with self cure or autopolymerizing or light cure resin. And then the impression is taken, bottom molding is done, zinc oxide you know, impression is taken of the selection situation. After this, this impression is then placed on the master cast which we have fabricated before. Or So, what is done is the edentulous area is completely cut off from the master cast and then the cast framework with the Final impression bottom molding is placed on the master cast and then it is stabilized on the master cast and then a beading boxing is done and the impression is poured only for this area which is the distal extension uh, base area. So this is how the boxing and beading is done and uh, this area will since this is recorded in a functional state by doing bottom molding and uh, recording the areas under finger pressure. So we uh, correlate the master cast with this functional impression and then the impression is poured. So this is how we get uh, altered cast impression technique. So this is the master cast which was recorded using any other technique and then the edentulous or a distal extension area is captured using the uh, cast partial framework and a record base. So this is a uh, altered cast impression technique. This is one of the most accepted impression techniques being used nowadays widely for especially in Kennedy's class 1 and class 2 situation only we need them. Uh, the most of the other techniques are uh, uh, used very less uh, nowadays. So this is how uh, altered cast impression technique looks. Uh, so first a master cast is fabricated using a selective pressure impression technique. You make custom trays with spacer and you record the final impression. You do border molding, record the final impression and then fabricate the cast framework and on the cast framework we fabricate the record base and then uh, we take an impression with border molding and then this is how the altered cast looks like. So this area, these are in two colors because the master cast has been poured in type 3 dental stone and this, the, our primary focus that is a distal extension dentulous area is poured in a type 4 or type 5 high strength dental stone or high strength and high expansion dental stone or die stone. So next uh, moving on to jaw relations. Uh, now in jaw relations in come our removed partial dentures are basically uh, uh, very easy if only a few tooth have to be replaced especially like Kennedy's class 4 or Kennedy's class 3 situation which are tooth bound situation and in that case we can just mount uh, the cast using by hand articulation that is by visually seeing the cast and by hand articulating the cast with each other and then mounting them on the articulator. But in situations such as this Kennedy's class 1 and class 2 situations where we don't have any distal stop or any posterior teeth then in those situations we need to record uh, fabricate record bases with wax rims and uh, take a jaw relation that is at the patient's existing vertical dimension that is when his anterior teeth come in contact the posterior space is filled with the record base and the, and the wax rims. So we can record the uh, jaw relation by two methods. One is the functionally generated path or FGP and second is the static method which is the most commonly used method which we use in the clinics over here. So I will tell you what the function generated path is there. In function generated path, the uh, what, so this is the 
functionally generated path which is mounted against the mandibular edentulous or distal edentulous uh, cast and according to this functionally generated path the lower denture teeth are then set or the trine is done according to the opposing functionally generated path the idea being that the teeth are in a sort of balanced occlusion in complete harmony during protrusive in centric in left and right lateral excursive movements so and this will not dislodge or put uh, uh, excessive forces on the edentulous residual alveolar ridges under the denture bases so this is a dynamic method that is all the movements are recorded and then the teeth are set that occlusive scheme is designed according to the functionally generated path second is the static method which we use that is simply we just uh, fabricate occlusal rims on the record basis uh, on the cast partial framework if we are doing a cast partial denture and then uh, bite is taken between the upper and lower softened wax rims and once the wax rims are softened then a top layer of the wax is removed to create space for a, a, a bite registration material usually a, a medium body silicone or light body silicone or zinc oxide is usually impression paint is the paste is then injected between the upper and lower occlusal rims and the patient is then again told to bite in maximum intercuspation so this is a static record in which patient does not do any functional movement he just closes his teeth in maximum intercuspation this is the most widely used method and uh, works for uh, most of the times and uh, so this brings us to the end of the jaw relation for removal part dentures so in conclusion there are various techniques uh, for recording the impressions for uh, distal extension situations but the basic principle is similar anatomic impression is used to record the teeth and a functional impression is used to record the edentulous ridges whether it is a fluid wax technique whether it is altered cast or uh, functional renin or you know maclean's or hendel's technique so basically the premise and the intention is the same that is we need to stitch two impressions that is a functional impression of the edentulous tissues and the anatomic impression of the dentulous areas Okay, so that brings us to the end of this lecture.